Good morning. Welcome to worship. My name is Susan Bresser, the pastor of First United Methodist Church in Whitewater, Wisconsin. We welcome you all and give a special welcome to the LaGrange United Methodist Church as they join us for worship today. It is good to be together, even from a distance. It is good to be together in worship. I do want to thank our worship leaders, Mike Mosier, Jim Athus, and Christine Hayes for their faithful participation, as well as thanking the tech crew from both First Church and the LaGrange United Methodist Church who work so hard behind the scenes to connect us virtually. Today is the first Sunday of Lent. On each Sunday of this season, six Sundays in total, we will be greeted virtually by First Church staff and leaders. Today, Jane Haskey and Gina McManaway will be greeting us. Jane and Gina work in the church office, keeping everything together. Judy Mosier, the chair of First Church's finance committee, will also be offering a greeting. By the end of the season of Lent, all of the staff and those in leadership positions will have shared with you how much they miss you and how grateful they are for your love and support. Just a reminder that First Church will be hosting a Lenten book study facilitated by Jesse Dugan. It begins tonight, February 21st. All of Warm is invited. Even if you don't have the book or haven't yet read the first two chapters, you are still welcome. This is an opportunity for community, even if it's virtual. So please see the weekly messenger for Jessie's contact information, and please let her know if you are interested. On Monday, February 22nd at 7 o'clock, all of WARM is invited to a special Zoom presentation featuring Lisa Adebacher and the work that she does for New Beginnings and the Association for the Prevention of Family Violence. Lisa serves as a crime victim advocate for New Beginnings. She will share with us what New Beginnings is all about. This gathering is sponsored by United Methodist Women. If interested, please see Deb Gamble's contact information in the weekly messenger. Let her know if you would like the Zoom link to be a part of this, of this presentation. Speaking of the Ottabachers, next Sunday during our worship service, we will be recognizing, celebrating, and saying farewell to Tim and Lisa Ottabacher as they move to northern Wisconsin to offer care and companionship for Tim's mother, Helen. Tim and Lisa will greet us virtually, and you will hear other voices thanking the Ottabachers for their commitment to ministry and for the many, many ways they have loved all of us and all of God's people. Should you wish to send notes of blessing and gratitude to the Ottabachers, please send to the church office care of Tim and Lisa. We will make sure that all of the cards and notes reach the Ottabachers. Thank you. Lent is a season of spiritual gardening, of inviting God to unearth in us what lies uncultivated and what needs to be tended for new life to emerge. New life emerges when we acknowledge our brokenness and what it is that keeps us from a life with God. Lent is a journey, a journey to restoration and forgiveness. And we only get there by growing. Growing in our faith, in our relationship with God, in possibilities and in promises. Growth means pushing through the dirt of our lives to begin the process of reconciliation, renewal, and restoration. When we grow, there is the possibility of bearing good fruit. May our time together in this worship service provide strength for our journey of faith and hope in these extraordinary times. 
Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Good morning. I'm Mike Mosher, and I'm your liturgist for the morning. Please join with me as we listen to these words of the call to worship. As darkness gives way to light and winter sleep to fresh beginnings, we come today to be reminded of God's love for us. Like the green shoots of renewed life stirring beneath the soil, we welcome an awakening of God's word in our lives. In this time of reflection and repentance, we affirm our identity, we claim our security as children of God. Welcome to worship. Please join with me in hearing and listening closely to these words of our opening prayer. The season of Lent is here, and with so many times before, we find that we are not really ready for the journey of discipleship. So many things claim our lives and prevent us from being ready to take the steps in faith. As we look at our barrier of readiness, help us to remember that Christ is with us every step of the way. We are not alone. Christ will help lift our hearts and spirits and direct our paths. Enable us, loving Savior, to take this journey of faith to new life with you. Amen. This is my Father's world. And to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my father's world, I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and seas. His hands the wonders wrought. This is my father's world. The birds their carols raise. The morning light, the lily bright, declare their maker's praise. This is Father's world, he shines. 
I hear him pass. He speaks to me everywhere. Hello, my name is Jane Haskey. For the past 22 years, I have been on staff here at FUMC, first in the church office and now in the business office. I am responsible for the business of First United Methodist Church and some of the business for the other warm churches also. Many of you know me, or at least know my voice, as I have been a member here at FUMC since 1979. I sure miss my church family, all of you. You have all been very good to me and have supported me for many years, both in my happiness and in my struggles. Soon, I hope very soon, we will again gather on Sunday mornings and at many other times and places to pray, sing praises, and hug each other. Please take good care of yourselves, stay healthy, and I sure hope to see you all soon. Bye now. Hi everyone, I'm Gina McManoy. At FUMC, I'm the clerical assistant, and these days my responsibilities are sending a lot of emails and a lot of mailings out to everybody to try and keep everybody in touch and so you know what's going on here at the church. I really miss everybody. Um, I can always be reached by phone. Um, I really look forward to when we can all get back together, and I hope everybody is staying happy and healthy, and thank you all for your support and your faithfulness during this time. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Judy Mosier, and I chair the Finance Committee at First United Methodist Church. I feel very blessed to be part of this community, this congregation, and I want to say thank you to everyone who has kept us connected over the past year. And it's not just in keeping us financially sound, but through all the efforts that have gone into making us a community, from virtual worship and Zoom meetings and gatherings, to notes and cards and even homemade valentines. Church is a community effort, and it's only by leaning in together that it works. So thank you to all of our warm community. I miss you, and I look forward to worshiping with you again as soon as it's safe. God bless. A reading from the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. A voice came from heaven, You are my Son the beloved, with you I am well pleased. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out on us the spirit of wisdom and understanding, that our hearts and our minds may be open to know your truth 
and your way. Amen. Every year on the first Sunday of Lent, the Gospel reading, either from Matthew, Mark, or Luke, gives us the story of Jesus' baptism and his 40 days in the wilderness. All three of the synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, agree that right after Jesus' baptism, God's Spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness. Even though Mark's Gospel has the most abbreviated account of this story, Mark's Gospel has the strongest language. The Spirit did not lead Jesus into the wilderness. The Spirit drove him, pushed him, urged him, forced him, compelled him, made him go into the wilderness. Mark employs a verb that has a more violent sense than we might imagine. Certainly more than that of Matthew or Luke where it seems that the Spirit just takes Jesus by the hand and escorts him into the wilderness. Not so in Mark's Gospel. And we shouldn't be surprised. After Jesus' baptism, before, before he's forced into the wilderness, after his baptism, it's the same Spirit that tears open the heavens. We are to feel the force of this description. It's not just an opening in the heavens, it's a division, a sense of splitting, breaking, shattering, rupturing, ripping. We aren't to read this as something beautiful, like on an overcast day when the clouds part in the sky and the rays from the sun form beams of light that touch the earth. That's a beautiful and a comforting image. That's not what this is in Mark's Gospel. That's not the kind of opening we are to imagine. Mark's description is much more intense than beautiful. Mark's description is much more shocking than soothing. You know, that which can be opened can be closed again. But that which is torn apart, ripped apart, cannot easily return to its former state. The Spirit of God tears open the heavens. The Spirit of God forces Jesus into the wilderness. What are we to do with this? Especially when we long for some, some, some sense of peace, some kind of comfort, some sense of relief. Mark's Gospel is the most difficult to comprehend. Personally, I think it's a reminder for us that following Jesus is not an invitation to an easy life. Baptism into the Spirit of Christ is to be called to, indeed driven into, an adventure that includes challenges and times of wilderness. Jesus' wilderness experience wasn't a vacation. It wasn't a spiritual retreat. Jesus didn't volunteer. Perhaps he resisted. In a way, this is comforting because it rings true to life, doesn't it? Most of the time, we don't choose to be in the wilderness. We don't volunteer for pain, for loss, for danger, or for fear. But the wilderness happens anyway. A global pandemic. Being separated from our loved ones for now almost a year. 
broken relationships, illness, job loss, loss of faith. The wilderness happens anyway. But there is hope. Jesus might be in the wilderness, but he's not alone. The wild animals and the angels are his companions. There is nothing in this reading to indicate that Jesus is afraid of the animals. For many of us to be surrounded, to have animals as companions is rather comforting. But what about those angels? The angels are tending to Jesus. Tending. As in a nurse caring for a patient, a parent comforting a child, a shepherd looking after the sheep, a mama bear minding her cubs. This is the most gentle language and gentle image we have in this gospel reading. My mom died of cancer in a hospice care facility. One of her nurses was a linebacker. That's exactly how he was built, as if he had just walked off the football field. He was huge, with skin the color of mocha coffee and a head full of dreadlocks. When my mom was uncomfortable, he could lift her easily and reposition her in her bed better than we could. When she wanted the warmth of the sun on her face, he could maneuver the bed easily to face the window in her room. When she would get chilled, he would wrap her up like a cocoon in warm, heated blankets. And he called my mom by her full name, Martha Lou. Martha Lou. Bless her heart. She was from southern Ohio. They all have double names. She never wanted anybody to call her by her full name. She was always known as Marty. Nobody ever called her Martha Lou. Not even my dad. Nobody. Well, except her dear, cherished parents, who had long been deceased, and her linebacker of a hospice nurse. I think it brought her comfort, in a way, because she so wanted to be reunited with her parents. In this reading, we have the violent physical act of pushing and forcing. We have the violent sound of ripping and tearing. And then we have the gentle presence of tending and caring. I might not understand a lot about angels, but I understand the presence of God's helpers, especially in the wilderness. That hospice nurse, he treated my mom as if she were beloved. Let's remember that before Jesus is pushed into the wilderness, he is affirmed by God at his baptism. Affirmed and identified as God's beloved. Before the wilderness is forced upon him, Jesus knows, Jesus knows he belongs to God. And so it is with us. 
We too have received the affirmation and the acceptance and the promise of the presence of God. The road to resurrection always leads through the wilderness. Always. God has called us to be a part of the struggle as representatives of love and of life. But we don't do it alone. As we begin the journey on the road to resurrection, I pray that we all can experience the presence of Christ. May we have courage as we enter into those places of wilderness, places we didn't choose, places we can't avoid. May we carry with us the promise that we are beloved, that we are precious to God, that we are identified as belonging to God. And when the angels call us by name, may we listen and trust and hang on for the ride. So let us grow in this understanding that we are not alone. And if that's the only growth we if that's the only growth we experience this week, may it be enough for all of us. Amen. Invite us to be in an attitude and a manner of prayer. 
Let us pray. Oh God, what a wilderness road this is. You call us to engage its mysteries, its challenges, and its unexpected encounters. And we call on you, God, to guide us and to be with us on this journey. No matter how far we wander, how wild the wilderness, whether our days feel easy or our lives feel burdened, you are our hope. Our love, our light, our praise, and our satisfaction. In gratitude, we name our joys before you for the increased pace of the COVID vaccine, for a strong kitchen committee and a new church kitchen, for the opportunity to gather, even from a distance for worship, for a Lenten book study, for the joy of treasured friendships and beloved family, and for the joy of angels among us, for the love and support of all the helpers in the midst of this COVID crisis, and for the Church of Jesus Christ that remains open even if buildings must remain closed. Trusting in your faithfulness, appealing to your grace, God, we give voice to our stresses, our worries, our fears, and our sadness. We pray especially for the Trebold family and for our church community as we mourn the death of our friend, our beloved friend and companion, Jeannie Trebold. We pray for those fighting cancer, for Steve and Ellie, and for many, many others. We pray for the connection we have with all of your creation in the big state of Texas and pray that those without might be restored to the most basic of needs, food, water, shelter, warmth. We pray for our world that continues to struggle with a global pandemic And we pray for all who are lost, lonely, and so very limited. Be a loving presence, we pray, and a healing touch to all who need you. And God, we ask that you tip your hand at long last and let justice flow. Strengthen those who are working for righteousness and peace. Sustain those who are calling for a new day, working to overturn racism, evil, oppression. We long for your love and your peace in our world and in our lives. Insist, God, that we find your love in one another. I pray that you might embolden us to be shameless, foolish even, in risking love for the sake of heaven and earth. And may we experience growth in our relationship with you during this season of Lent. We pray in the name of the one who journeys with us to death and gives us eternal life, praying together the prayer taught to us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
our mission into the world. When I leave this place, I am going into the community where people need a kind, caring, encouraging word, and God sending me to get the word out. The joy and peace in this life comes in sharing what I have received. So I go in peace to experience the joy in the name of the living God who lives in Jesus and who empowers me to be a witness through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive these words of benediction. Whatever wilderness the Spirit has brought you to. Walk in boldness as a beloved child of God. Walk in peace under the shelter of the Most High. Walk in faith, knowing Christ walks with you. Amen. Amen.